so today I'm going to introduce you, I'm going to talk to you about Firefox OS. I'm going to talk to you about HTML for the mobile web. So what does that mean? How many developers in the room? I would say mostly everybody. Mostly everybody. So when you have a discussion with your customers, when you talk with other people, then one of your customers tell you, hey, Fred, if your name is Fred, hey, Fred, I would like to create a mobile application. Most of the time, the discussion is about, oh, should I uh, start with an iPhone application? Should I start with an Android application? And sometimes, if you're lucky, you're going to have that discussion about, should I go do a web application using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, or should I create something native? What I call that sumo fight between those two technologies. And more often than, than not, that's not going to be HTML, the solution. You're going to say, no, let's do, let's do something native because that's going to be faster, because I'm going to have access to different API, I'm going to have access to hardware, and this is kind of sad. That makes me cry all the time. Because I'm a huge fan of web technology. And as a huge fan of web technology, like HTML5, I was so happy when we came out with uh, that latest version. New features, great technology, great functionality for me as a developer to create great application for my users, to create great web application, web games, great technology. And this is great, but at some times, if you're trying to create great mobile applications, sometimes HTML5, it's kind of fade a little bit. It's not there yet sometimes. You need to do stuff. You're not finding the API that you need. You want to access the hardware. You don't have the functionality that you need. And again, this is sad because I'm not a big fan of statistics. But no matter which kind of statistics that you're looking for, we're going to have a ton shit of the devices connected to the internet really soon. It's already happening. If you look at that slide, uh, the prediction is that in like six years, we're going to have 38 billion devices out there that will be connected to the internet. Of course, if we remove those internet of things that are not really having interaction with us, as an example, I have my Fitbit here uh, when I walk. Uh, it's connected to my phone, it's connected to the internet. I don't really have interaction with that device. But most of the devices in which I have interaction with, they have one point in common, the browser. The browser is the way for me to connect to the internet, access web application, access web pages, do stuff. I have browser on my TV, I have, some, I have a browser on my Xbox, on the PlayStation. I even have a browser on my Kindle. Is there anyone from Amazon here? So, this is not the best experience ever, but still, on my e-reader, I have a browser, I can access the web. So for me, that means something. That means that HTML should be the technology of choice when we're talking about creating mobile application or mobile game. So today, what I want you to understand is that that HTML5 that you like or may not like, that sometimes are kind of a little bit fade, it's not totally working, how I would like it to work as developers can be that fantastic HTML5 that we're all looking for. And this is part of the reason why we created Firefox OS. So a couple of years ago, we say, hey, Mozilla's mission is to open the web to more people. We did this with Firefox. We did this with another project. And we wanted to do this on the smartphone space, or at least connected devices space. So we said, let's create a real open system that will use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So one year-ish ago, we launched the first device. What is great is that that device is built entirely with web technology, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So when you play with a Firefox OS device, what you see is made with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The application that you have, because this is an OS for smartphone primarily, those applications are made with CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. It's open source, really open source. You're going to get help. Everything is there. Uh, if you want to talk about the architecture, we use the Gunk Linux kernel. On top of that, we have Gecko. Gecko is a, uh, it's our engine behind Firefox. And on top of that, we have the visual part of the OS, Gaia. And everything is made with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Even the telephony application made with web technology. So some facts before going to the technical side of Firefox OS. 
So we launched our first phone kind of one year-ish ago. We are now in more than 24 countries. If you're from the United States or from Canada, you may not heard a lot about Firefox OS because we don't have any devices here. And the point is that Firefox OS is primarily for emerging market. Those phones, the, that OS that we created was to open the web and give access to the web to low-end markets. So those are some of the devices out there. We have, I think, 10 plus phones out there, different kind of phones from ZTE, Alcatel, LG. LG. Uh, we have some tablets that are coming. We have Panasonic working on the TV with Firefox OS. We have a, a kind of Chromecast equivalent. I think the name is Matchstick. Uh, that are raising money right now to work on that prototype, on that uh, type of device. So we create the OS. We don't sell any devices. We don't create any devices, but we work with partners. And the fact that we have many devices out there in that many countries after one year is a proof that it's working well. There's a desire for users to use that technology, and there's a desire for developers to create applications for those devices. But those devices are quite different from what you know today. As an example, you can buy online on eBay. This is a new device. Uh, for less than $100, the ZT Open. Those are low entry devices. No contract, $100. There's another device for developer, a little bit, uh, a little less cheaper, a little, a little more expensive, but with the shipping all over the world, $170, you can get that device. It's a more IM device than the other one we have, perfect for developers. But at some point, even the $100 phones in Canada, in the USA, we are quite lucky. We can afford those latest iPhone. We can afford those latest Android devices. We have the money, or most of the people have the money to buy those phones. But in some other places, even $100 for a phone is quite expensive. So not too long ago, we launched a phone, not 2,000 bucks, it's Indian rupees. It's like $33. And those are smartphones. So you can use application. You have a marketplace. You can install those applications. For, so for $33, you can get a smartphone. Of course, this is really low entry device phone when it comes to performance, when it comes to hardware, but at the end, those are really great smartphones that Indian people right now can use, can buy at their local store. So I told you, this is a smartphone. There's a marketplace, so you can go in the marketplace, you can install application. Of course, we're starting, but all the application that you usually need on your device are there on the marketplace. We have also something called the Adaptive App Search. And basically what is great is that because the web is the device, the device is the web, we have that Adaptive App Search where you can search for different applications or just search for a uh, different term. Like I can uh, search for soccer or I can search for YouTube because I did not have an iPhone so I did not receive the free album from YouTube. So I can search for YouTube in the Adaptive App Search and the phone will change my experience will give me different application. Even if those applications are not installed on my phone, I will be able to use them, and I will have a customized experience. So if I open YouTube, by looking for the term YouTube, I'm gonna see some videos already in that application. So for developers, this is a great opportunity because my application, even if it's not installed on the phone, can be used by many thousands of people because of those kind of features. So I'm talking about Firefox OS application. I'm talking about HTML, CSS, JavaScript. What is a Firefox OS application? Basically, you have two types of application you can create. A Nosted application, you basically have your HTML, CSS, JavaScript file, whatever you need to run your application on your own server. You can put it on GitHub pages or whatever hosting provider you host your application. There's also the package app. And this is basically what you know if you're building an application for their platform. So this is basically a zip file where you're going to put all your files, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, songs files, images, everything you need to run your application on a zip file. You're going to upload this to the marketplace. We're going to host your application for you. You can create what I call vanilla HTML application using only HTML, CSS, JavaScript, the technology that is working in a browser. You can use all the, lib the libraries you use day-to-day -to, -day to build your web application. 
You can also use our web API. So what we did, we create something called the web API. So we, instead of creating a new SDK, we just had some API on top of HTML. So it's still JavaScript, it's still the technology you know, but we created those APIs to give you access to the hardware. So there is three types of API. I will come back a little more on those there. So right now, if you already have a web application, an HTML application, it's working in a browser, an HTML game, whatever you did with your application, if it's working in a browser, you already have a Firefox OS application. The only thing you need to do is to have a manifest file. It's basically a JSON file with all the description and information about your application. You put that JSON file and you create a Firefox OS application. Is it that easy? I will show you. So what I'm going to do right now, I have that uh, small kind of boilerplate type of application starter called Firefox OS Starter. And this is basically a file, uh, a folder with an empty JavaScript file with some icons, empty uh, CSS file, and uh, basically empty uh, index uh, HTML5. The only important thing here is the my manifest file. So it's just because I'm lazy, I don't want to type this every time I'm doing a demo or I'm creating a new Firefox OS application, but this is basically my manifest file that will help me to create a Firefox OS application from an actual web application. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use um, to do MVC. So this is a project on GitHub. Uh, this is a project, a to-do list. Uh, let me show you in the browser. So it's a to-do list like any other to-do list, but what is great is that uh, it's working in a browser. They use the same project and they use different libraries to recreate the project again and again and again to give you a great context when you're comparing libraries. You can compare those libraries with the same kind of project all the time. So you can see the different structure, you can see the different usage of the library. In that case, I'm using the one uh, using Ember.js. So uh, basically, it's a to-do list, nothing complex, giving my talk, it's mostly done. So. Uh, this is to-do list, super application. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take that to-do list, I'm going to create a Firefox OS application out of it. So again, because I'm lazy, I'm just going to take all the files in my to-do MVC using Ember.js application. I'm going to move this to my starter project there. And I just created the Firefox OS application. So basically, I would have been able just to take my manifest file and move it to the other folder that may have been easier. But because I may want to publish my application to the marketplace, I have all those icon files. So now you need to believe me. I created the Firefox OS application. It's not true. I'm going to show you uh, that is actually working. So what is great with Firefox OS is that no matter the OS that you work with, Linux, Windows, OS X, you can create Firefox OS application because this is basically just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You will need Firefox, the browser. Inside Firefox, you already have something called the App Manager. So in the developer tool menu, the web developer menu, you're going to have the App Manager. And this is basically the place, the application inside Firefox that will help me to test my application on a real device or on a simulator. And this is also great because like any other platform, you don't need a real device to test the application. At some point, it may be good to use a real device to test your application. But if you just want to prototype, if you just want to see how it's working, you can use a simulator. And this is not part of Firefox, but those are free add-ons. So you can download them. I have different version here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add my application that I just created to my app manager called Firefox OS Starter. So I just need to point this uh, app manager to the folder where is my manifest file. So the app manager can detect that it's a Firefox OS application. What I'm going to see right now is that my application is now in the app manager. I can use that application. I can test that application. I can debug that, app that application inside of uh, the app manager. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the simulator. This is the same version that you have on the phone. This one is version 1.3. I'm going to push my application on the simulator by clicking update. Because I'm connected to the simulator, it knows that it needs to be pushed push on that simulator. So I could have give a better name to my application, but this is name of the application application. So let's click on it. And I have my Firefox OS application. 
So this is the to-do list that I had before. And uh, testing, and it's working like before. But it's a Firefox OS application. So is it the best application you ever saw in your life? No, thanks. Because the people are like, yes, yes, so you liars. This is not the best application you ever saw. So I told you it's quite easy to go from an actual HTML application to a Firefox OS application because I only have to use the manifest. Everything should work fine. If you use different libraries, you may have some issues. We're going to work with you. We're going to see how it goes. But most of the time, it's that easy. The problem right now is that my application that I create, that I port to Firefox OS, I did not think about maybe using responsive web design. So now I need to scroll up, scroll down, zoom in, zoom out. Not the best experience ever. So in my case, I would have to think about smaller devices to make it a real good Firefox OS application. But that would be a first step. I would have no integration in the system. Maybe it's good. I think that many games that don't need integration with the OS. But maybe for a to-do list, maybe I would like to have some notification when there is a task. Maybe I would like to, I don't know, there is many things that I would like to have in my application to make it part of the system. That would give a better experience to my user. That would give a better experience to potential customers. So not the best application ever. But it was easy for me to take an actual application and make it a Firefox OS one. So I told you about those web APIs. This is what I want to use to have better integration in the platform. So the first categories of APIs are the one that we call the regular APIs. So that goes from the alarm API, the battery status API, the geolocation API, the push API. So all those APIs you can read on the screen. Uh, they're there for you. And what is great is because they're called regular API, there's nothing wrong that you can do with those APIs. So you can use those APIs either by creating a hosted application, so you host yourself your application, or you can do this by creating a package application. You're going to publish your application to the marketplace. And keep in mind that hosted application, you still can publish your application to the marketplace, but what's going to happen because you host your file, that's going to be a link between the marketplace and your application. So user will still be able to search for your application in the marketplace, but you will host your files. So there is a lot of advantages to do this because you're going to have access to those API. You're going to be able to update easily the application without submitting all the times your application for uh, a review from the marketplace. So something you may not are used to if you are publishing, publishing another platform. So as an example, there's the MBN Light Sensor API. So right now, this is not something we can do with HTML. There is no way for me to access the MBN Light Sensor on the device. So what we created, we created the MBN Light Sensors API with two lines of code. I'm adding an even listener on device light, and I'm calling that anonymous function. I'm going to say, hey, event.value, when uh, I'm going to have a device light event, please in that case, I'm not doing something super exciting. I'm just showing writing, do a console console load with the even dot value. But that's going to give me a value in locks between uh, zero, zero like it, it's completely dark, to uh, ten thousands like I'm, I'm going to be blind soon. So I'm going to show you how it's working with a real device. So I have one device here. Uh, this is a developer device, one of the first device we launched. It's not available anymore, but this is a great developer device. The only thing I need is USB cable. Depending on the OS, it may be a little more complex. With some OS, you're going to need some drivers, uh, some other that's going to be good. So what I'm going to do to show you how it's working, I'm going to use an application called Druid at Screen. You're going to see a really slow refresh rate. This is not the Firefox OS device. This is the Java application that are on my computer to show you what's on my screen. So right now, what I'm going to do I'm going to use another application available on GitHub called the Firefox OS Bordel Plate. This is basically an application that my colleague uh, Robert Nyman created to showcase different usage of the API. I'm going to use that application, add it to my App Manager, the same thing I did with my uh, super cool application that I did before. But this time, I'm going to disconnect from the simulator. And what you can see right now is that because my computer detected that phone, my app manager know, hey, this is a Firefox OS phone. I have the option right now to connect to the phone. 
So what you're going to see is that oh, sorry. you're going to see that I have an incoming request to connect, and after this I can let me just close this. It's going to be better. Let me show you. I'm going to be able to push that application to my phone. So you're going to see in a couple of seconds on my screen, my Firefox OS boilerplate has been installed on my phone. So I'm going to open that application. And again, maybe I have something with UI. It's not the sexiest application you will ever see. But this is pretty great. This is pretty good if you want to start building Firefox OS application because we had uh, most of the web API. So it's really easy for you to see something in action. So what I'm going to show you is the ambient light sensor. Let me zoom this. So you're going to see right now I have moderate kind of like light. If I put my hands on it, you're going to see that go until maybe zero. If I do a good job. And oh, I scroll. And you're going to see that the number changed. So again, one line, two lines of JavaScript, I was able to get the light sensor using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. I, I think that is pretty exciting. And what is great is that after this, you can do, that can be useful if you're uh, creating a reader application, you know you have that white background during the day and it's pretty amazing, but once you, once you want to read, uh, you're in your bed, night, no more light, that white background, uh, that white background is pretty uh, intense. So you may want to change it. If you see that the ambient light is not that uh, is not that huge around the phone, you may want to change that background to put a black one. Another example is the battery status. Again, it's not something right now I can do with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Some lines of code. Again, JavaScript. I'm going to be able to, uh, with the uh, navigator.battery, I'm going to be able to access to that object. That will give me the information about the battery. So what is the level of the battery? Uh, is it charging? Is it connected to USB? Is it discharging? How much time? So that can be useful if, if I'm making a game and I want to be sure that the data will be saved before the battery is dead. So again, some event listener level change, charging change, uh, charging time change, and I can get that information with a couple of lines of JavaScript. There's another level of API called the privileged one. And now, it's more about the security level of those APIs. You can only use those APIs on privileged application. So in that case, you won't have the choice to publish your application to the marketplace because we're going to have reviewers that's going to review your code to be sure you're not doing something evil. So we think about browser APIs, contact APIs, device storage APIs, and more APIs are coming also in that privileged part. So as an example, there's the browser API. It's saying, it seems to be a little bit meta because we're talking about an OS that is kind of a browser using HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Inside the OS, you have a Firefox OS browser if you just want to browse the web. And now we're talking about, about a browser API. But that could be useful if you're doing some OAuth authentication in your application. As an example, I'm working on a Remember the Milk application. I don't know if you know that services, but this is basically a to-do list. So maybe I have something also for to-do list. And uh, what I need to do, I need to have that iframe. So this is probably the only time where I'm happy to use an iframe. And the magic keyword will be mouse browser. So if I put mouse browser in my iframe, Firefox OS will know that I'm using the browser API. And what I'm going to be able to do after is use different values to uh, different event listener. So mouse browser, load start, uh, icon change, location, location change. And in my case, that's going to be interesting because what I have to do for my Remember the Milk application, and it's the same thing for Twitter and Facebook, I'm going to open that iframe. I'm going to ask the user to connect to Remember the Milk with his username, password. I'm not keeping those. It's in the iframe. It's in the browser session. Once it's connected, I want that user to give me access to his data. So I can download the data, update the data, delete the data. You gotta click, okay, yeah, I'm giving access to Fred. And what's gonna happen is that Remember the Milk will send me a link with a key in the link. So what I did in my case, I said, okay, let's have an event listener, oh, sorry, on, on mouse browser location change. When that location changed and I have that high PI key that will give me access to the data, grab that link, get the information, remove the iframe, and I'm done. I now have access to the data 
the remember the milk had come from that user without having the username password. So in that case, if there's something, the user can just remove my access and it's done. So quite useful to use also. There is a third level of API. And this one is a little bit tricky. This is called the certified API. Think about the camera API, the network status API, the web SMS API, web telephony. But those APIs, you don't have access. They're only for OEM application or OS application. No, I'm not losing your time by talking about an API you can access. It's good to know that they are there. Because at some point, they may change from certified to privileged or from certified to regular API. We may change the security level of those APIs. But now you may be afraid because I put camera API first. Say so this is a certified API. You cannot access those APIs. Does that mean that I cannot access the camera by building when I'm building a Firefox OS application? So to play, not to play, but to work with that security level of certified API, we create something called the web activities. So we have different web activities, the browse, the configure, the dial, the open, the new mail, in web SMS, the view, uh, web activities. And you can use those activities on pack package app, but also hosted app. So as an example, probably the one you will use the most if you build Firefox OS application, or if you port your actual HTML application to Firefox OS and you want to do a better integration, there is the pick activities. So by the way, new Moz activity, I'm saying the name of my activity is PIP. The type of data is JPEG. I want an image. I want a JPEG. In that case, this is a way for me to use the camera without using the camera. So the user will see that screen. And that's basically uh, going to ask him, would you like to choose an image from the wallpaper, from the gallery, or use the camera to take a new picture? In that case, you're going to receive the image of the user no matter which option you choose. So you don't know if the image coming from the camera, coming from the wallpaper or elsewhere, but you're going to get that image that you want to use in your application. If the user cancel, you're going to get an on error and you're going to have to deal with it and do something else or just ask again for the permission. You can use that MOZ activity to do different things. There's a dial MOZ activity, so new MOZ activity, the name is dial. I'm going to put the number. What's going to happen in that case is that the telephony application will open. The phone number will already be there, but no phone call will be made until the user click on the green button or cancel or close the application. So because you don't want an application to do phone calls for you. So this is a way for you to help the user because, you know, users are lazy too. So if you can help them to put those phone numbers, if you can help them by opening the application, that's going to be done for, for him or her. But the user will have to do the manual step of doing the call himself. You can also be a receiver. So one thing is that you can use those mouse activity to do an action inside your application. But you can be that application doing an action. In that case, I told you the manifest file is important to tell Firefox OS it's a Firefox OS application. But there is other things you can do with the manifest file, like putting some permission, but also be a web activity received handler. So in my case, in my manifest file, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have activities and I say, hey, I can handle some types of activities. I can handle the pick one. And if the application requests a JPEG or a PNG, I can handle this. And if that happens, call index.html. What's going to happen is that remember to pick activities with the screen, with the wallpaper, the camera, and uh, the image gallery. If you handle activities, Firefox will display your application in that list. If that happens, the user click on your application you're going to need to handle that activity. So in my case, when the application will open, I'm going to check, hey, is this an activity that opened my application? If it's the case, is it the pick activity? OK, I can manage this. Let me send the image to the user. So this is other ways for you to have more usage of your application without having the user to open directly your application. So that can, uh, it, it, it seems to be a little bit like, uh, what is the feature in Android? There's a similar feature in Android that you can uh, basically do the same kind of things. Talking about Android, what is great is that we don't want people to build Firefox OS application. We want people to build web application. Right now, it's kind of tricky. 
because we had to create those APIs that were missing in JavaScript, that were missing in HTML to really give you the power to create those applications. So what we did is that if you port your application to Firefox OS, if you create a Firefox OS application, Android user will be able to install and use your application. If you have an Android phone, you need to install Firefox because we need that Firefox code base to be able to understand Firefox OS application. But once you go into Marketplace in Firefox, you're going to be able to install the Firefox OS application in Android. And it's going to be installed on your own screen like any other Android application. So another way for you to developers to reach more people. And that's going to be true also with the desktop. If you have the Firefox browser on your desktop, you can install Firefox OS application. And it's working great. It's working well. So again, another way for you that they're going to be, as an example, in OSX, they're going to be installed in my application folder like any other application I install on uh, OSX. Again, you're going to need Firefox to desktop to be sure that there is a way for the system to understand how to run those applications. So you build an application working on Firefox OS. That's working on Android. That's working on the desktop. So how to start? First, maybe. Why to start? If you already have a web application or web game, I show you, it's easy to port your application to Firefox OS. So this is first thing. You're going to be able to reach more people. You're going to be able to reach a new audience. Think about all the countries you've seen before. Think about all the emerging market that you may not talk to right now with your application. So that's going to be a great opportunity for you. When it comes to monetization, it's not because it's Mozilla that you need to have your application free. If you want to sell your application, go for it. And we have what we call the web payment API. You can use that web payment API. But you can use whatever you want. PayPal. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just seeing Jonathan here from PayPal. You can use PayPal or any other uh, technology you want. You just need to work with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We don't restrict you to one technology. You want to put ads? Go for it. We don't have any system at Mozilla to help you with ads, but any ad system that work with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can use those. You can do in app portraits. You can do free application with ads, and then once you buy, uh, no more ads. So there is like the monetization strategy that you have on your platform, you can have those on Firefox OS. The only thing is that we don't restrict you to use specific type of application or services. You don't have to, you don't need to have your application open source too. I am in an open source conference, but sometimes depending on your company, it's not because it's Mozilla that you really have to, you really have to open your application. Of course, I at least suggest you to do so, but you don't have to. So everything should be wonderful. Everything should work well. It should be like a unicorn. Life would be beautiful. You're gonna take your HTML application, you're gonna port it to Firefox OS, that should work on the first try. You may have some glitch sometimes because it's hard for us to cover all the libraries, but usually if you test your application on Firefox and it's working well, that should work well on Firefox OS. How many PhoneGap or Cordova developers here? Don't be shy. <laughs> like three, four people. Okay, so for those people, we have support for PhoneGap, we have support for Cordova. And again, it seems to be kind of meta to talk about PhoneGap to build an HTML application. But that could be nice if you want to port on different platforms. So you can use, you can create a PhoneGap Cordova application and release a Firefox OS application, application out of it. Like you would release an iOS and Android. And we basically have most of the support you need. So I, I think it's too small for you to see. But if you go on, uh, on GitHub and you search for Mozilla Cordova, you're going to see all the plugins. And most of the plugins, or at least most of the popular plugins that people use for uh, creating their uh, phone gap and Cordova application are there. And the one missing are coming because it's fairly new. We just had those uh, implementation recently. So we are working with Anime, we're working with the Cordova folks to be sure that we have a full integration for Firefox OS. It's simple to start. As I told you, you need the Firefox OS browser. It's free, no other platform, OS X, Linux, Windows. You can start to create your application. You have the simulator. There are three different versions. You can download them for free again. But you also have the Firefox web developer tools. And I'm not talking about Firefox. 
Inside of Firefox, there is the developer tools, and they're great, really great. They're, they really did a great job, the uh, developer tools teams, engineering teams. They really did a great job to create those tools inside of Firefox, but what is great is that they're really nice to create and debug any HTML application working in the browsers. They're also really great to debug Firefox OS application. So you have everything you need in the browser. After this, when it's come to the IDE, use the one you like. We don't restrict you. You're looking for information, documentation. Everything is on Mozilla Developer Network, MDN. It's not because I'm working on Mozilla, but I really think that it's one of the best wiki out there when it comes to HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's an open wiki. You see something that is wrong. You see an example missing. I'll post, make it even better. So all the information for HTML, CSS, JavaScript is there, but also for Firefox OS, all the APIs, all the examples that you would like to see, they're on MDN. There's Stack Overflow. It's not something from Mozilla. You probably know it. One of the biggest, one of the best uh, forum for developer out there. We have a Firefox OS tag. We are monitoring that tag. So if you have any question, of course, you can send me an email. But you can also get on Stack Overflow, and you may have an answer a little, a little more quicker because I'm traveling a little bit with my job. So I'm not always looking to my emails. So it's a great way to, to ask questions there. And we're building at the same time a public FAQ by using Stack Overflow. So this is only the beginning. We launched Firefox OS one year-ish ago. The idea, we had the idea three years ago. We we're working with many partners. We're going to launch in more countries. We're going to see more APIs coming. Uh, we're going to see more devices coming. We're going to see more features for users. But it's a really, really, really good start. So next time, you're going to have that discussion with people. You're going to have like, hey, should I build a native application? Should I build a web application? Think about the web. We have the tool right now. We have the APIs right now. Think about Firefox OS. This is a great opportunity. And because those devices are really low-cost devices, there's many companies right now that are thinking about just giving those devices to their users because they're really cost-effective. So you have something that's going to work in the browser. You have something that's going to work in Firefox OS. You have something that's going to work on different other devices like Android and on desktop. This is a great technology. Again, this is only the beginning. Some resources about the talk where you can find the simulator, Stack Overflow, pointing to Firefox OS uh, tag, the Firefox OS App Manager, some documentation about it, the Mozilla Developer Network. Again, those slides will be put online. Last but not least, hafarper at mozilla.com. If you have any question, comment after the talk, feel free to uh, ping me my email. I'm that old. I like email. We're going Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. If you like technical blog posts, hacks.mozilla.org, uh, great blog posts from engineer at Mozilla, from uh, developer all across the world, from uh, people that are just giving their time to Mozilla, from people on our team. This is all technical stuff around HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Firefox, Firefox for Android, Firefox OS. Uh, if you want to write about it, let me know. We're always looking for a new contributor. This is a great exposure. We got uh, a lot of readers. Again, out of comfortzone.net, my personal blog. Uh, like some blog posts in French, in English, in Franklish. Uh, I'm going to put the slides and the recording of my presentation there. So I think I still have five minutes. So if you have any question, comment, or insult, let me know. I still have two devices if you want to see and test them after during the break. Yes.